Uh, this week I'm back down in Artesia, and um, it is just as surreal a place as it was when I was here at the end of July and early August. I think one of the things that's most disturbing to me is that these people have real asylum cases. These aren't economic migrants. Um, the people we're talking to every single day are telling us some of the most horrific stories that we've heard. Um, um, we don't really have confidentiality when we talk to our clients. Um, literally, we'll be at a, a, a card table um, or, or a desk that's maybe four or five feet from another table or desk that has another woman crying about some other horrific thing that's happened to her. Um, and just story after story, hour after hour, you can see the, the toll that this is, this is taking on people. We were dealing with an immigration judge on a video screen that was so small that her image was maybe two inches tall. Her head was so small, I couldn't tell what her facial expression was. Um, we listened to the Department of Homeland Security argue that releasing any one of the people who are detained here in Artesia is per se a national security risk. An argument that I cannot believe somebody can actually make on a straight, with a straight face. A bond hearing is supposed to be an individualized evaluation of two things. Is this person a danger to the community? And are they a flight risk? Are they going to show up for their hearing? We know that asylum applicants show up for their hearings. The lowest percentage of appearance rate for an asylum seeker that I was able to find is 91%. And if we include cases where people have counsel, that level rises to 98%. The woman who is appearing in this bond, uh, bond review hearing that was asking to be released, or at a minimum to have her 14-year-old son released, had no criminal history. She had four siblings in the United States, all of whom had legal status. And one of them was, was even just literally on the verge of becoming a US citizen. All she had to do was take the oath. Her husband had been here. He's undocumented. He's been here for four years. Stable ties. Good case. She had pro bono counsel lined up to take her case all the way through. What struck, what struck me today is just how badly people want to leave this facility. Um, everyone is ask, everyone's asking about a bond and the possibility of getting out. Uh, people with their kids are coming in with sick kids and are trying to leave, just trying to get out for the sake of their kids. Um, they're talking about the conditions and they're talking about the that, I, that ICE officers are yelling at them, that they've been yelled at, um, that their kids have been told to shut up. The whole thing has been chaotic. When I got for example, today I was talking to a client when I had an officer come up to me and pull me away from a client and say that I was I needed to go to an immigration court hearing. So I ran over to the immigration court hearing where I was told that my client was not there. Therefore, I had to get I was lectured by the judge and then told that the, the case would be continued because I wasn't prepared. When in reality, I was expecting a hearing, but I was expecting a hearing four hours later. I've had someone come in, to, had five people come in at the end of the day. Two of the people got here on the 25th of July and had not yet had a credible fear interview. In fact, one had been ordered deported already. Um, I also had someone that came here on the 25th, had never seen, an, or they had been in, they'd been in Artesia since end of June, had not seen, have not seen an, an attorney, um, already had an interview, at first were found not credible, and then was vacated, fortunately, by a judge on the 25th of July. Unfortunately, they haven't heard anything about their next hearing notice. So that's kind of the day-to-day -to, -day to here, is just figuring out, I spent most of my time just figuring out what's going to happen next to these people and to their immigration court cases. The things that you take, the things that I take for granted in my normal practice are, ha are not happening here. No one's getting clear instructions, and they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And regardless of what they're doing, they're getting yelled at and treated as if is it their prisoner? Is it their criminals?